Hi guys, uh, welcome to Metal and Rock Zone. Um, yeah, somehow what I wanted to do today, I want to compare these three bands because this is Guns N' Roses, Metallica and Iron Maiden for those of you who don't know. If you don't know then you're probably on the wrong channel though, but um, somehow all the stars were aligned for about a week in June this summer here in Prague where, where we're living and uh, so within that week, uh, I managed to see those three bands play live. Um, two of them, so first Guns N' Roses in an in a outdoor stadium at an old airport. Then uh, Iron Maiden in a, in a football stadium, a little bit smaller venue. And then Metallica at the same airport as, as um, uh, Guns N' Roses. So, the Metallica Guns N' Roses were probably 60,000, 70,000 people and, and I think Iron Maiden was probably around 40,000 people or something like that. So I've done individual reviews of each concert that you can find on the channel here um, under Concert Reviews Playlist. Um, so look at those and uh, yeah, please subscribe, leave comments, challenge, whatever, ask. Uh, I don't know, maybe I might not have the answers, but I'll try. So what I did now is that I kind of took 10 categories um, and I scored on a scale of 0 to 10 in each category. So there are 100 points in the, in the pot. And this is kind of a battle of the bands. Who did it best within this week? 2022 Prague, Czech Republic, Europe. And uh, the first category is, is um, the merchandising. And uh, there I felt like uh, with both with, uh, with uh, uh, Metallica and Guns N' Roses that there was a lot of kind of retro stuff missing. I was missing that a little bit from the from what was available and uh, whereas Iron Maiden had the best they had their beer they had these I don't know pilot helmets and and stuff they, they had some really really cool stuff and also some retro I actually bought a t-shirt with this um, this picture on from Live After Death since which is since 80 something you know and uh, so I'm giving Guns N' Roses 8 uh, Iron Maiden gets 9 and uh, Metallica gets eight. They had a lot of stuff also sold out, but they had a big, you know, variety, but it was, it was a lot of stuff sold out. Then the next thing is the warm-up bands. So their Guns N' Roses had uh, Gary Clark Jr. And uh, to be very honest, he did nothing for the crowd. They, he, they, he didn't work them up at all. I mean, he's a great musician. He's a great guitarist. He's a great singer. The band was good and all that, but there was just no atmosphere somehow. So they get five for that. Um, and uh, Iron Maiden had Airborne, which I missed. I missed them there. I've seen Airborne before, but I could see it because when I came, Airborne were finishing and there were so many people coming out of the, let's say, the stands and the, and the standing zone that it was obvious that people had been in there the whole time to watch the band. And people that I asked, they said that they were great. Uh, a friend of mine saw them and he, he said that they were amazing. So I'm not going to give them, they get seven for, for that because uh, it's important in, in, in this case, because the set list for Iron Maiden wasn't super long, then it's super important that the, the warm-up band is good. As for um, uh, Metallica, then they had, um, well, it's maybe not even fair to call it the warm-up band, because it was, it's a part of a whole day program called Prague Rocks, and they had Five Finger Death Punch playing before them, and that was great. That worked, that worked the crowd really well. The band was um, uh, doing they were engaging very much with the crowd. People were singing along. They knew the lyrics. So the, so the crowd was warm when Metallica came on stage. So Guns N' Roses gets five. Uh, Iron Maiden gets seven for Airborne. And Metallica gets eight for Five Finger Death Punch. And the reason why I give them just eight is that I don't like Five Finger Death Punch. This might be very unfair, but it's my channel. I can be biased. Uh, then sound quality and, uh, and uh, lights and... No, sorry. Yeah, sound quality, yes. So these are very different venues, first of all. I mean, this open space that Guns N' Roses and Metallica played at is, is more tricky. I, I, I do get that, that for, for, a, for, for a band and a sound engineer, that's maybe more tricky than a, than a stadium that is a little bit closed off. And uh, it was, you know, I, for Guns N' Roses, it took them 30 to 40 minutes to kind of get the sound right. And that's just too long. Even if the set list was super long, it's, it's still 30, 40 minutes and, and it was, yeah, it was, 
embarrassing I felt at some moments. I hate saying that because I really liked the band and I really loved watching them, but it was it wasn't wasn't good. 30, 40 minutes kind of yeah, didn't feel right. So I'm gonna give them five. Iron Maiden, they just fucking nailed it. But yes, they were in a, in a football stadium. So I'm going to give them nine. There was just not, not from first second to the last, no issues. Um, they hit the ground running. They, they, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because they've done this a million times or whatever. But I think, you know, yeah, but probably, you know, while concert horses were on a hiatus or, or didn't play for, you know, decades or two, then Iron Maiden were on the road. So they have really, they really got it. Uh, as for... As for Metallica, they they were it took them like one song to kind of get it. So uh, the first song, Whiplash, wasn't really great, but you know they they had to kind of tune the bass and, and drum sound a little bit, and then they got it. So five for Guns N' Roses, thirty forty minutes is just too long. Uh, nine for Iron Maiden, they nailed it, and eight for for Metallica, they get a little bit punished for that one song in the beginning because it's a short set. Um, we're very demanding. Uh, stage, lights, and show. Uh, I don't know. The, the Because of Guns N' Roses playing a really long set of 30 songs, uh, they had to start really early. So it's completely bright outside. Uh, and you, don't, you just don't really get that atmosphere that you otherwise would get. So I think, to some extent, that works against them in my rating. I'm going to give them uh, 7 for that. There wasn't really anything new. They had some, you know, projections on a screen behind, and they had two big screens where they showed the band members. But I, yeah, I think maybe if it would have started in in, in dark, then it, it would have been nicer. Um, I think Iron Maiden. I'm gonna give them nine. They did a great job considering that they had a really small or relatively small stage but they did the most out of it. They had they changed kind of the theme of the stage by kind of pulling some fabric off some uh, furniture or, or some, what's it called? Con some blocks or, you know, some, some stuff that was there. So in, in some shape. So they, they went with the Asian Senjutsu uh, thing from their newest album in the beginning and then kind of the theme changed. And uh, so I'm, I'm gonna give them nine for that. And they started a little bit later. So it was dark and, and the lights and the whole thing kind of yeah, you got more out of it somehow. Uh, with Metallica, they I'm going to give them 10. They, they were great. They, they did themes, they did projections, they had smoke, they had fire, they had fireworks. Uh, there was just everything somehow in, in that. And, uh, and it's always been like that with, with Metallica. I always felt like in the past 10, 15 years that I've seen them, uh, that the show is just, it's great. And it's, it's, it's thought through, you know, like, so from, from each album, they were playing songs, you know, when they were playing songs from Ride the Lightning here, you know, then everything was kind of bluish, you know? So you, you always felt, and it was the same, actually, Iron Maiden kind of did the same. You, you, you kind of felt that. I mean, yeah, Guns N' Roses can't really maybe, maybe do that. I mean, they could change from blue to yellow color from <laughs> Usual Illusion 1 to Usual Illusion 2, but yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work like that. So, so seven on Guns N' Roses, nine on Iron Maiden, and ten on Metallica. Uh, the band performance in general, uh, I think, uh, with Guns N' Roses, the sound quality really worked against them. You know, they, I, I didn't feel that it, they that they kind of silly to say got into their full potential right away. But because the sound quality was bad, you kind of missed a little bit, or you know, you didn't really feel that what you know they can do and you know the way they can sound. So, so I'm going to give them eight. Um, with Iron Maiden, that was just perfect from minute one to minute uh, final. It was, it was great. And, and, uh, and these guys are just, it's so easy for them, but they still seem to like it and enjoy it. And it's kind of shines through, uh, Metallica, they get eight. Um, and that's primarily for the, the drumming in my Metallica review, which you can find here under concert reviews, you can look at that because there we discussed the elephant in the room, and that is whether Lars Ulrich can still drum or not. But I, I felt that, or I feel that sometimes the drum sound leaves it, or the way that he drums or whatever, it it, it leaves it a little bit hollow. It 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 loses a little bit of the tightness. So eight for them, ten for Iron Maiden, and eight for Guns N' Roses. Singing performance. Uh, 
starts with Guns N' Roses. So it obviously takes, and that's now I've seen Guns N' Roses five or six times after the reunion. It obviously takes Axel Rose a little bit of time to kind of warm up. Uh, he could maybe do that before the concert. I don't know what his routine is or whatever. I'm pretty sure that he is professional about it, but it's, it's always been like this. I always felt like it's four, five, six songs until he kind of hits his stride. Throughout this concert, there were songs where he was excellent. For example, we have Reckless Life here on the channel, uh, the video from that, and he did that. That was great. It, I kind of felt like I'm back in 86 or something, you know, like, or 88 or whenever that GNR Lies came out. And, uh, um, but when he's off, he is royally off. And, I mean, yeah, it's challenging singing. It's not like... he. In my mind, he's always been one of the greatest rock singers ever, and I know a lot of people don't agree with me, but I think that when he let it rip on, on, on some of those songs back in the days, it was just second to none, you know, and he had such a amazing range of voice. And so I'm going to give them seven for the singing because, you know, yeah, when he got it, it was great, but there were a few songs where it was not really good. Uh, then Iron Maiden, I'm going to say that Bruce Dickinson, he has somehow managed to keep singing those really challenging and difficult songs perfectly. And uh, I noticed that in some of them he changes a little bit, how, how he doesn't go to the high notes as much as he did, but he had done it in a way that you don't really notice the change so much, you know, like it's not like with some of those guys, like I saw Whitesnake, we have a review on that here, then Coverdale can't sing a lot of the stuff, so he makes the fans sing, you know, so he's kind of, or the, the keyboard players sing, and they do that great, but... Um, with Bruce, he, he, he just does it, and he, he, he is amazing, actually. I'm going to have to give them nine. He, that, I was very surprised by that. Uh, and I'm going to give uh, Metallica nine as well, because James Hetfield, he, uh, he was better now. I saw it in 2019 the last time. He, he was actually better now. He also looked better. He was in a better shape. Uh, he's obviously been doing something right when it comes to his own health, and it shines through the singing. And he... I was listening to some older Metallica songs on the way home from the concert, some old live songs from some deluxe edition of this album, and I, I you don't notice such a big difference. I mean, of course, he doesn't maybe scream as much as he did back then, but he, he, he can sing this stuff, and he, he does it really well. So nine for them, nine for Iron Maiden, and seven on Axl Rose. Um, the audience and, and the band interaction and kind of the chemistry. I. Guns N' Roses, they tried. Axel Rose was the most fun version of Axel Rose that I've ever seen on this concert. He was joking around, he was trying to joke, joke around with the band, with the fans. I, for a moment I thought that the people who were there, which were Czech people, uh, English level in this country sucks. I thought for a moment that nobody understood what he was saying. Uh, I was proven wrong when I went to see the other band, so... Uh, I don't know, they just didn't get it somehow, that uh, they didn't get the crowd, as I said, the warm-up band didn't get the crowd, the set list was 30 songs, it's very long, started in daylight, um, I don't know, it's, uh, it's, it's somehow, it just never got off, so I'm going to have to give them six, they didn't get the atmosphere that I was hoping, and, and the chemistry somehow, he didn't manage to kind of infect the crowd with the, the, the mood that he was obviously in, um, and... Uh, and then, yeah, then I went to see Iron Maiden a few days later and I realized that Czech people actually do understand English because they were singing along, they were cheering along, they were following the instructions of Bruce Dickinson, who was a master of ceremonies. He just, they ate from his palm, and it, it, or here, palm, or, yeah, palm. And, uh, and that was great. And so I'm going to have to give them nine because they really got the crowd up. Of course, it was helped by that the crowd was warm when, when the band came on stage from Airborne, but uh, he, he really, really got them working. Uh, then Metallica, uh, they are just, uh, they're just in a different league somehow. I don't know, maybe all the struggles, because I mean, a lot of the stuff that has been going on within Metallica with, you know, James Hetfield's alcohol issues and stuff like that, and all the history, you know, they lost band members, Cliff Burton died. I think they've always been sort of, they did that movie, some kind of monster. They're, they're, they're a human band somehow, you know, like people relate to them. 
they are, are humble, they're honest, they talk, you know, they, they've been, you know, br he broke down on stage earlier on the tour and said, I don't think my guitar playing is good or something like that. And the band hugged, you know, and like this is, yeah, this shows them very much as human. And, and, and after the show, they, they stayed on the stage for a long time, thanked everyone. They walked through out the guitar picks and the drumsticks and all that stuff. And you really felt that they, they went the extra mile. And uh, so I'm going to give them 10. They, they just, you know, they had people singing along. And yeah, it was just, it was, it was a different connection, you know, like it was, it was a human connection, not just an atmospheric rock and roll connection. It was more like, you know, I don't know, even if they would have been playing acoustic out there, people would have fucking loved it, you know, maybe they should. You can pay me royalties if they do it. Um, so... Six on Guns N' Roses, nine on Iron Maiden, and ten on Metallica for atmosphere and, and, and kind of interaction with the fans. The set lists, uh, so I mean, Guns N' Roses played 30 songs, so you can't say that anything was missing, so I'm just going to have to give them nine, because everything was there that, that I like or, you know, what people like about them. I mean, of course, there are always going to be individual songs that some people like or miss or something. But, you know, like when you play 30 songs, you're pretty much covered, so I'm going to give them nine for that. Uh, it's it's kind of weird because in the next category I'm gonna punish them for the length of the <laughs> set list. Uh, now I don't make them. I'm gonna have to give them eight. I felt like there was some stuff missing. They did three songs from the new, latest album, Sen Senyutsu, the three first songs, and it's a set of sixteen songs I think that they they did in total, and uh, fifteen sorry, fifteen songs that they did in total. And I feel like if you do fifteen songs. And you're Iron Maiden, and you started in late 70s, um, you kind of have to either extend the set or sacrifice some of the newer stuff. Because they didn't play anything from Killers, um, I, I was missing Two Minutes to Midnight, um, Running Free was not there. So I felt like there, I'm going to have to give them eight. I, I, I can't give them higher than that because on such a short set to play three new songs, it's, yeah, they, then they should have added maybe two more songs to kind of justify those three new songs. Uh, Metallica 9, they have, a, they split from, you know, even songs from St. Anchor, they had a really nice balance. They played most from this song, actually, from this album, actually. Uh, but uh, I think four songs, and they played uh, two, I think, Kill Em All songs, and two Master of Puppets songs, St. Anchor, Death Magnetic, and uh, Hardwired. And even, yeah, No Leaf Clover from, from s and uh, So they, yeah, they had a very nicely rounded set on, on just, I think, what is it here? On just 16 songs, but they, it, it felt complete, you know? Uh, didn't feel like anything was missing. And obviously they don't have a new album out or anything like that. So I, I do understand that them versus Iron Maiden, you know, it's a, it's a different, they're at a different cycle kind of in their touring. Uh, so I'm going to give them nine. So that's uh, nine on, on Guns Roses, eight on Iron Maiden, and nine on, on Metallica. We're almost to the end of, of and now, and then we need to calculate. Call an adult. Uh, the set length, okay, so it was too long. For Guns N' Roses, it's weird to say it, you know, like, uh, and they, they did solos and stuff like that in between, and, you know, like, you don't need that when you're playing for two and a half hours, and I think yeah, I, I, it, it just got too long, and it's weird to feel bored on a Guns N' Roses concert. It's almost like a blasphemy to say that. Uh, so I'm going to give them five for that set list, and I'm, I'll come to that a little bit later as well. Uh, Iron Maiden, I'm going to have to give them eight, because I think it was too short when you have those three new songs in. And I'm going to have to give nine to, to Metallica, because, uh, yeah, it was very rounded. It, it was, you felt that you kind of, captured the whole career in, in that set list. Now, the overall experience, um, I'm going to have to give seven to, to Guns N' Roses, and they started too early, it was too long, and, um, and I think that, in my mind, what the other bands, the other two bands are doing, playing a little bit shorter sets, having a better warm-up, uh, helps them. Uh, if, I w if I was Guns N' Roses, which I'm not, or if I was an advisor to Guns N' Roses that they would listen to, I would tell them, guys, shorten the set, take, you know, 18 songs, do 18 to 20 songs, but 
nail it, do it well, you know, have the sound working from, from song number one, start with the songs that are easier to sing, uh, bring songs forward in the set that, that bring atmosphere to the crowd, you know, Paradise City was the la last song, I do understand that, but also, what if that was song number three, you know, and everybody got in a super good mood. Um, so, yeah, that was too long, it started early, and, and it's, it's really, yeah, um, I think it affects the quality of the performance because it's hard to sing 30 songs. I mean, I, I couldn't do that, and I'm 10 years younger than Axel Rose, you know, and, uh, and they do this two, three times a week for maybe four months or something. I mean, I don't think it's human even. Uh, then uh, uh, the overall experience of Iron Maiden, that was really good, uh, apart from these three new songs on a short set, but I'm going to have to give them eight. And uh, yeah, I have no, nothing but great to say about the Metallica thing, the whole thing, the show, the lights, the singing, the atmosphere, the song selection, you know, I'm going to give them night, nine. So it's seven on Guns N' Roses, eight on, on uh, Iron Maiden and nine on Metallica. Now, I was thinking when I was doing this list, I have, I have like a, it's like a super like professional sheet here. Oh, now you see that I'm calculating Excel. I'm not doing it in my mind. Um, so anything special that stood out? I think, yeah, I, I feel like it's weird to be with Guns N' Roses, the band that has a significant impact on my teenage years. You know, I had my first uh, experience with a girl listening to this album here. Uh, and it's weird to go there, but I will always go. I will go even if, if, if it's, I don't know, I will be there even if, if it's in their funerals, I'll be there listening. Um, it's weird to be somewhere in, with a band like this and you feel like it's too long. It, it shouldn't feel like that. It's weird. Uh, I think for what surprised me about Iron Maiden is the, the singing quality. How great, I, I knew that the band would be great, but I didn't know that Bruce Dickens would be so great. Um, and uh, with Metallica, I think it was the crowd and the connection that they're able to make. And uh, what I realized always with this band is that they brought, they made music that was very unpalatable or undigestible, digestible for the masses. They brought metal to the masses, you know. I remember when I was playing this music to my parents when I was maybe, I don't know, 15 or something like that, like, and they were like, what is this, you know, why are they damaging the instruments and what, what's wrong with these people, what happened in their childhood and whatever, you know. But they have, they took this genre or this type of music and they made it mainstream, you know. And you can see, if you look at the type of people that are on, on concert with Iron Maiden versus Metallica, it's very different. With Metallica you have everyone. With Iron Maiden it's more metal fans and, you know, which is interesting because, you know, this is a heavier band than this. This is a much more melodic band in, in some way. So, so Metallica has somehow managed to break this into the mainstream and, and make us all think that we love it. And we do. And we pay to see it. Um, so the best thing about this gig, Guns N' Roses, to get to see them again. Uh, Iron Maiden, it's a comeback band. I saw them when they were playing for 3,000 people in Denmark in 2005 and they were on a low they are back up there and they probably will go down and up again and the new album is great for example i don't make them no sorry metallica they're better now than than they were three years ago and they are improving the band is improving i i i have a feeling that they have quite a few good years left in them uh, if they keep take care of themselves and stuff like that here's the score guys the moment you all been waiting for uh second place that's going to be Iron Maiden with 86 points out of 100 possible points. And third place is going to be Guns N' Roses with only 67 points out of a possible 100. And that leaves the obvious winner, Metallica, with 88 points out of 100. So it's a tight race between Iron Maiden and Metallica. Uh, if I would have guessed beforehand, I would have thought that Iron Maiden would take this. Um, but when I started kind of looking into it and, and, and going back in my mind and kind of scoring it in my amazing advanced system, then I realized that Metallica did it best. And uh, the one that can improve the most, uh, it's these guys here. Um, maybe make a shorter program and uh, get the sound working from minute one and start playing in dark. That would be a nice thing. And uh, yeah, I think guys, please 
Comment, tell me if you've seen those bands live. Check out some of our other reviews. We have White Snake, we have uh, Saxon, uh, we have Halloween. We went to see Halloween and uh, some other reviews on the on the on the page and some videos from those concerts that we go to. Um, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye.